this is Tony Von Bank, and I'm recording from a bunker in the district office. And I wanted to share with you a few of the best practices with classroom management for one to one devices. You know, if you have uh, devices on carts in the classroom a lot, you probably know quite a bit about this already, and you might be able to flip through it quicker. Um, you might be pretty confident with this uh, altogether. That's great. Uh, I don't mean to question anybody's ability to uh, use technology in the classroom. This is more of a resource for those that are going to be new to having students with one-to-one -one devices in their class every day. And a few of the tips and tricks we've learned from a lot of other teachers that uh, have been in the same environment over the last couple years in different districts and just passing along some of the things that we hope are gonna be the most helpful as you move forward. Uh, you know, one of the main things is that your job is not really to uh, manage the devices. You have technicians in the building in the Chrome Depot that are going to help kids with the devices. Um, your job is still just as it always has been to manage the students. That has not really changed. The vi devices are really not going to change that either. Um, good teaching is still good teaching. Most of your best practices for classroom management are going to work exactly the same when they have the devices in the room. You might just need to apply some of those same types of expectations and procedures to uh, using the uh, Chromebooks as well. Lesson development, um, Chromebook use is going to be inherently a little bit more engaging, um, or at least it should be. That's one of the big sells for it. But as you build your lessons, making sure that the targets uh, are really clear and that there's a really clear connection between what you're doing with your lesson and what you're doing with the Chromebook. And, you know, I think that that comes with practice but it's really great to be able to say, you know, students today, we're going to be using the Chromebooks to use Google Maps to take a look at some of the battlefields that we've been um, learning about with the Civil War and making it clear that that's a very specific task that meets a very specific target that you're working on in the class. Uh, by comparison, it's probably not as effective to say, you know, today we're going to be uh, learning a few things about the Civil War. You can have your computer open and you can take some notes as we go. And we'll see if we have any time to do, uh, to look at some pictures at the end. That's probably going to invite a little bit more trouble as we go. Uh, as with anything, clear expectations. That's hard sometimes when you're uh, new to this environment to know, well, what do I... Uh, what am I supposed to tell them? You know, what are my expectations going to be when I'm not even sure? Uh, I would say, think worst case scenario, what are you most concerned or afraid of? And build your expectations in a positive, friendly way around that. If your biggest concern, and it should be, with kids screwing around on the uh, Chromebooks and not paying attention to the lesson, then we need to set up some procedures that will bypass that as easily as possible. But being proactive with this is definitely far more effective than finding out problems over the course of a couple of weeks or a month and then retroactively trying to nip that. That's not um, as easy to do as you can imagine. Some sample expectations for starters. You know, just let them know that while we're working on something, you're going to have only the tabs open that I've asked you to open and you're not to have any outside tabs open during a lesson and that includes maybe YouTube or um, you know a game or something like that. Make that clear and maybe explain what the consequence might be. Maybe the consequence is you won't be able to complete the lesson in class. You'll have to work on it at home or something like that. Um, consistency is key with that so whatever you set up for your expectations you'll want to follow up on that the exact same way and one thing that we do uh, see and hear from other teachers is you know sometimes that consistency is tough because your quote-unquote good kids and your quote-unquote trouble kids uh, sometimes are looked at differently and we want to avoid that as much as possible we want to look at everybody as uh, equal learner and different kids are going to have different needs with the uh, one-to-one environment and 
try to make sure that you don't let something slide for one student and then jump on it with another. We want to make sure that the message is clear. These are the uh, reasonable expectations and we hold everybody to that. Some teachers come up with some uh, interesting management tricks. I think one of the most important parts is to, for the students to know when it's okay to use the Chromebook and when it's not. If you don't lay that out, they're going to assume they can have their screen up and be goofing around on it all the time, which is obviously going to be a recipe for trouble. So one thing that a lot of teachers, especially at the high school level, use is the half-closed method. If it's something you're going to be going back to in five minutes, three minutes, ten minutes, have them close the cover halfway so that their eyes are on the lesson, wherever that is, whether that's a discussion or whether that's a teacher up front or what have you. And then have them go back into their task again. You know, the other thing that is uh, kind of important as you go is the classroom arrangement. Standing at the front with everybody having uh, screens open is obviously also uh, troublesome. It's it's kind of a break from what we traditionally think of as teaching, although I think most teachers now know that, you know, there's going to be trouble in the back row no matter where, uh, no matter what I do when I'm standing in the front. So, you know, moving around is probably pretty important. Wherever possible, I know that sometimes um, actual physical space with a lot of kids in the room might uh, prohibit this a little bit, but wherever possible, uh, be on the move as much as you can. Um, some teachers just made one simple switch and switched their main podium to the side rather than the front. Uh, sometimes that can be tricky, moving back and forth to, say, a whiteboard or something at the front. But you'll also find that some of the things that you used to display, you can now post for them to look at on their own device, which would allow you to be able to move away from a central point like a smart board or something. Um, if you have the room and the space, there is a lot of opportunity for collaboration with uh, uh, Chromebooks. You might um, experiment with some clusters or with some different uh, non-traditional arrangements. It'd be a good time to make some of those um, switches or at least experiment with that a little bit so that you can walk around and be a lot more mobile. Using timers is pretty great. You want to let them know, hey, we're going to do this task in this amount of time, and then we're going to be done with the Chromebooks for a while, and keep them to that. Also, Schoology is the connective tissue for all of the one-to-one -one stuff. All the things that you used to have to copy 150 or 80 copies of, you can now post for them and maybe have a classroom set of 30 just so that they have something in front of them. And even that might be completely unnecessary in a lot of cases. So try to run a lot of the things through Schoology and then you'll be able to be more mobile as well. Um, some examples, you know, complete... Task 7C that I posted on Schoology, you got 20 minutes, I want to uh, walk around and help you when you get stuck. When you're finished, you can go to X or Y as websites and do some practice. If you're not going to do that, you can close it so that you don't get in any kind of trouble. It's important to let them know that you know, step 2 follows step 1 and to know the natural progression of what they're doing with their time. Also, you want to really avoid saying, well, we've got, you know, when you're finished, you might have 15 minutes, you can just um, surf the internet when you're done. That's obviously going to be very problematic and distracting to other students. So you want to say, hey, if there's downtime, you're going to close your Chromebooks and you're going to read or you're going to do whatever else you're going to do. Or you can set up a set of approved sites that you are okay with them using during digital downtime, but only if they're on certain links. That'll help keep the learning continuing and keep them out of trouble. Um, speaking of trouble, we don't want any gotcha moments. We want to make it clear that, you know what, I can check the history on your device. If you clear that, we can call in and we can find out where you've been you can let them know before you take a test, hey, if I have any questions about test security, I'm going to check histories and I'm going to move forward uh, with consequences. We don't want to have any gotcha moments. We want to have this be a safe place to learn. And make sure that you use your student leaders. They're great resources. Don't be afraid to ask them for help. Don't be afraid to admit that you don't have everything all figured out as you go. So think of, I had a little bit about what 
you're going to do with your time and how you're going to deal with different problems and be an ambassador for the positive use of digital technology.